usefulness of that bio oil is, is, is very debatable, but um, it is in principle possible to, to get an oil directly out of pyrolysis without a, a gas step first. Um, of course, we can, and so that's typically what's meant here by the, the, the direct li liquidation processes. Yeah, somebody in the group that's focused on that. Uh, we're, yeah, Jay Hasty is over here. Um, and so she, she has a, a, a benchtop uh, Fisher Trope. Well, actually, it's a, it's a benchtop pressure and heat um, reactor that right now it has catalysts in it to run a Fisher Trope process. The Canon Prince will run a variety of catalyst based up migrating projects. But I mean, that's, that's at a demo and research stage. A lot of these things are very possible as a demo or uh, a, a prototype project. But the, the amount of land between doing that on the bench top and having it be something that is economically viable and process-wise viable, logistics viable, without all sorts of distortions of that real value calculus is large. Okay? So we're no way claiming that, that we can show you a liquidation project process that is reasonable today. Okay? And these, these um, the liquidation projects are famously difficult to get to reasonable economic footprints. So we think it's going to be possible, but, but we're, we're not at that, at that stage yet. Okay, so there's the general chart. Um, so the part I'm going to go through right now is we got this gasification, which is um, the primary dry process for energy. What is gasification? Um, Gasification is most easily thought of as a process of choked combustion or, or more complicatedly, staged combustion. The goal is to take a dry biomass material, um, partially oxidate it, create enough heat in that partial oxidation to break apart the remainder of the biomass and then have those gases coming off of it be usable for um, other purposes. It's something like running an engine really, really rich you know, in a hot rod. Um, you want flames to come out of the exhaust to pull the choke down, so you don't get enough air in to complete your combustion in the cylinders, and you get a bunch of gases coming out of the exhaust, and you can light the gases at the tailpipe. Okay, a gasifier is kind of like a hot rod with the choke point. Okay, you're trying to do a little bit of burning, but not get up enough air such that you get gases coming out of it that you can burn elsewhere. Okay, um, this process is somewhat like what we see going on in a match or um, a campfire. Who knows when a campfire is burning, the fire isn't happening down in the log. We'll usually see a little clear space right above the wood, and then above that, you actually get the, the colored flame. What's happening there is that once you get a fire going or you, you put a flame to a piece of wood, the heat is breaking down that raw biomass. Gases are coming out of it, and then it's those gases that are burning above the biomass. Okay. The beginning of combustion of biomass, we're not actually burning any of the solids. We're burning the gases that are being liberated out of the material. Okay? That process of liberating gases out of the material is called pyrolysis. And this is the, you know, one of the two core processes that typ we typically don't understand when we look at fire. Okay? When you apply heat to a raw biomass in the absence of oxygen, um, the biomass will begin to break down. Um, and release gases, okay? The biomass, for purposes of, of a thermal process, has two basic parts. It has the fixed carbon, which is the, all the carbon to carbon bonds and backbone, the structural integrity of the biomass. And then it has a variety of other more complicated molecules in it that we collectively call the volatiles. We call the volatiles to the reactive. They're less strongly bonded to the biomass. So that when you put heat on the biomass, those poorly bonded molecules start coming off as gases. Okay? The first gases that come off of heating biomass are literally fragments of the raw biomass that can exist in a gaseous form. Okay? And then if those, those gases go into higher and higher temperatures, they can start recombining and evolving into other gaseous and liquid species. But the first liberation of gases off of the biomass are literally fragments of the biomass. It's very unusual unusual process, okay? So that is called pyrolysis. It's literally um, fragmenting through heat, okay? We typically see this or know of this as um, the charcoal making process. 
Um, we apply heat to raw biomass, we get all these gases that come off, it's nasty, black, gooey, and what remains is the charcoal. The charcoal is the, the fixed carbon portion of the biomass. It is, the, again, the, the carbon lattice backbone of the biomass, um, and the more strongly bonded part of the biomass such that it resists um, the breaking by heat. Okay? The biomass can later be combusted if you add oxygen, but if, remember, the core, the core feature of pyrolysis is you're doing it without oxygen. You're using just raw heat to break the biomass. Okay? So that's what we have going on in the beginning stage of combustion of the mesh. We're using heat to break the, the biomass. We have gases coming off. The gas is mixed with air above it and then um, combust. Okay? In a full, um, well, in a full fire situation or full gasification process, we actually have four distinct processes going on. Drying, pyrolysis, combustion, and reduction. Um, two of these we are typically familiar with and two are, are foreign. So. I'll, fo I'll focus on the foreign ones first. Um, drying and combustion are the ones typically understood. Drying, of course, is uh, uh, heating a biomass that has, uh, has water in it. Uh, that water comes off as, as water vapor. Any of these thermal processes, we first have to get all of the water out of the biomass, or really the, bi the water will come out as we're heating the biomass and moving it into a thermally relevant regime. Uh, combustion is... Um, what we typically think of it, adding oxygen to some reactive molecule and we get oxidation and we release heat. Okay? The two foreign processes in this are pyrolysis and reduction. <coughs> pyrolysis, we just we went through, it's the breaking of the biomass with heat, separating it into a gaseous uh, component and a solid component. Um, and reduction is revealed here in this chart. Okay. Um, reduction is a process whereby we can, we can break water vapor and carbon dioxide um, into smaller molecules that have, have fuel potential. You can think of it in some ways as a process of, of deoxidation, where oxidation is adding oxygen to a hydrogen or carbon molecule and releasing energy. Um, reduction is pulling those oxygens back off of completely combusted molecules um, and giving them fuel value again. So if we take, the reduction happens over a, a, a bed of red hot charcoal. Charcoal is again raw carbon um, at very high temperatures. It's highly reactive. Um, and if you take um, completely uh, combusted molecules, uh, CO2 and water vapor, across that charcoal bed, it will pull the oxygens off of those um, being that the charcoal is more that the oxygen is, is more highly react or attracted to the charcoal than it is the molecule that it's in. So those molecules break down and um, return to hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Dan? I, 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 have, the, I have the idea that, that if, if, you're, if you're operating a gasifier mm -hmm. and your objective is to gasify all the, all the biomass, that these are very helpful react reactions because they use up the carbon and, and make yes. gas out of it. If you're operating as a biochar unit and want to get carbon as one of your products, you may not want these these, these reactions to take place. This is true. Can you comment on that? Just to well, this, this is the core of the issue. So the problem in a gasifier for energy purposes is you want a clean gas. Okay? It's very easy to make gas with heat. You can run pyrolysis, you get charcoal out, and this mixed pyrolysis gas. Um, and uh, in honest discourse, we call that gas um, tar, or um, a toxic waste disposal problem. It's incredibly dirty. It's historically been a huge problem around charcoal making applications. And the notion that we can just use that straight out for some sort of reasonable fuel is a bit of a stretch. Um, it looks nice in a PowerPoint presentation. We have the, the magic machine, and we have you know, charcoal coming out here, and then we have this gas that goes to energy, a little square there. Looks great. Okay, but the, the reality of using that gas in an actual machine is very, very difficult. Okay, so the point of a, a gasifier for energy purposes, um, historically, why we even bothered with these more complicated um, reactors is you were trying to convert that pyrolysis gas into something that you could actually put in an engine. So what you, the core thing you're doing in a gasifier is you're running pyrolysis, you make the charcoal and the gas, 
the gas is dirty, you burn the gas, okay, generate a lot of heat, the carbon dioxide and water vapor from burning it, and then you take that heat and those combustion products back over the charcoal and reduce it into these gases that have fuel value, hydrogen and carbon monoxide. So a, ga a gasifier puts these four processes together in a particular order such that you can get rid of the nasty gas by burning it, okay, getting rid of all, all of the, the black nasties, and then reducing those, that, that, that gas over charcoal with heat to produce the things you want. Okay. So this is a problem if you want both um, gas and charcoal out. At what stage is the burning of the black tar step? Um, after, I'll go through the drawings next of how it happens in, in the reactors, okay? but it's after pyrolysis. A clean gas process is going to stack up the processes, drying, get all the water out of the fuel, pyrolysis, break the, the material down into carbon and, and gases, combustion, you burn the gases, and then reduction, you reduce, you reduce those burning products over the charcoal and get clean gas. Okay? So, so if if your if your your objective is to to retain carbon as a product, you may want to cut back on these these reactions. Yeah, I, in a regular gasifier, charcoal will pass through. You don't you don't consume all the charcoal, but that charcoal is passed through the highest temperature areas of the reactor, so it'll be a very high temp charcoal, which will have certain positive features. Uh, or features that we often find positive of high surface area, um, higher CEC, um, but it won't have any remaining volatiles in it, and it's so your initial bump on your biological activity is going to be lower. But if you want to amend that biochar, if you're in a regime where you really you want to take the biochar and put it with something else, it can actually be a, a very a good biochar. But if you're just working with the raw material and not doing any amendment with it, typically we want to. The, the summary at this point is we want to be making it in about 500 C range, so we maintain volatiles in the fuel. So there's a variety of exotic ways in which you can do both of these things. Um, you can, and working with the gasifier, um, that's a whole other front we work on. Again, we're, we're going towards a combined energy and biochar machine on that, that platform. Um, how, we, how we do that isn't public yet, but will be soon. Um, there's a lot of also work saying, well, let's just run the pyrolysis and then clean up the gases. And um, I personally don't think that's a, a very realistic route, though it can be done, but at, at a complexity that um, is not true. So just so. want to make sure I understand, because this is something I didn't get. You're, well, after pyrolysis, you've got gas and you could burn it, mm -hmm. but you're saying it's a whole bunch of different kind of gases. So you burn it, but then you reduce it back and you get the simple gases that, you, that are clean that you can burn. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to show how that works here. Alex, you have a question? Yeah, I think it's on the related previous slide. Yeah, thanks. On the left side, the inputs, you've got kind of what I think of as low value of inputs. CO2, okay, that's a, a waste gas, and water vapor. And on the right side, you've got high value of fuel gas. Well, this looks magic. It's, oh, well, that is a problem here. You get to put the fire out because you got red hole. Well, what if your carbon dioxide input on the left and your water vapor left were, let's say, high temperatures, let's say red hot temperatures? It'd still be an endothermic reaction, right? Mm -hmm. But you'd be a lot better off if you, if you had hot CO2 and hot water, and you'd still be going with a low value of inputs and high value of outputs. So that, that's kind of magic. It's yeah, I was very surprised when I learned of this, that there, there is a way that you can break water and separate water into hydrogen and oxygen with heat, that there's a route-separate electrolysis to get hydrogen. And this is obvious to anyone in the petrochemical industry, but I wasn't in the petrochemical industry. I didn't know that there was this major route, and it is you know, a central reaction in, in all historic petrochemical operations. It was originally discovered in, in um, steel mills, Steel mills, you know, when they're using coke and running it through the, the iron <laughs> to get the carbon out, um, found that they could produce a fuel gas. Um, and the, the, what was coming off in the stack was burnable. Well, they were discovering the reduction reactions. So, um, but to answer your question, Alex, there is always some sort of 
well, in a gasification situation, you always have some sort of fire that is producing the CO2 and water vapor.